Welcome again to Joe Stunner Boxing. I hope you're doing well. Um, on Friday, that's Friday, not Saturday, there is a very, very interesting fight, a rematch taking place for the IBF light flyweight title. And it is between the champion Adrian Curiel from Mexico and South Africa's Sivanethi Noshinga. Now, you may remember these two clashing back in November. And uh, Nonshinga, again, from South Africa, only 25 years old, um, orthodox fighter. He came in undefeated in 12 fights with nine KOs, being groomed as, you know, a superstar, South Africa's next big, big name. Um, and certainly someone who was going to dominate, possibly dominate, the, um, the lower weights, the real little guys. And if you've watched this channel before, you know we love the little guys. We absolutely love them. So many punches, so much action, so many unsung fights, brilliant fights that occur. Well, he fought Curiel, um, like I say, back in November. And Curiel came in with 23 wins, only five KOs in the win column, four defeats, all on points, and a draw. He's also 25. How many times have we said this? Do not sleep on an unknown Mexican fighter because if you do, you run the risk of getting flattened. And even though Curiel, in 24 wins, only had five KOs, he flattened Nonshinga, the un previously undefeated Nonshinga, in only two rounds with basically one punch. You know, now Nonshinga, um, he actually won that IBF belt. Uh, it was, I think, it was a vacant. Yeah. I mean, um, I'm pretty certain, ninety nine percent certain, it was a vacant belt, and he won it in 2019, I think it was, and he made a string of, I think maybe six defenses. I think um, Curiel may have been his seventh defense or something along those lines. I know there were a lot of defenses, um, and he really did look the part. You know, he looked, he looked very, very good. He had a couple of close tussles. Don't get me wrong, but and he was also flawed previously in one of his fights. I think back in around about 2021, um, but he got up to win. Um, so there was a slight question mark over his chin. But again, Curiel only had five KOs and 24 wins, so um, 23 wins. So no one expected him to knock him out. In fact, Nonshinga, his previous two fights had been against a guy called Reggie Sugarnob. Sugarnob. <laughs> All right, steady. <laughs> Let's not get childish. Um, and prior to that, I mean, he was he was undefeated. Mr. Sugarnob was undefeated in 13 fights. But he'd also beaten um, Hector Flores, who was undefeated. He'd had 20 wins and four draws, but no defeats. So his last two fights were against undefeated guys. And in fact, if you look at um, Nonshinga's reign going up to the Curiel fight, I think he has something like he, the, the combined record of all of his challenges – and the, the, the guy he won the title off, the vacant title, or he won the vacant title against, was something like 103 wins, 14 defeats, and four draws, something like that. So he fought good men. And, of course, when you when you go down to, like, flyweight and, you you know, the minimum weight, you're, you're looking – a lot of fans, myself included, I love the smaller weights. I watch a lot of smaller weight boxing. But a lot of these guys, you've never heard of them. It doesn't, doesn't mean they're bad. It just means that you've just not heard of them. So sometimes, even though statistics are not everything, uh, sometimes you have to go by statistics. And it did look like Nonshinga was really, you know, he did look like a guy who was a future star. He won that IBF vacant belt in only his sixth fight. And there he was making, you know, six defenses. And the seventh was um, Mr. Curiel. What happens? Oops, he gets flattened. Now, Curiel coming from Mexico, completely unknown. I, I, well, I'd heard of him. That, that's not, that, that, I can't say I hadn't heard of him. And I'd seen him, I'd seen drips and drabs, but I didn't think he'd upset the apple cart against Nonshinga. I think my prediction for that fight was that Nonshinga would win a decision. But I never, ever dreamed he'd get flattened in two. Um, but again, you know, Curiel, now that, the thing is about these young fighters, I mean, Curiel's only, only 25, the same as Nonshinga. And already he's had, this is going to be his 30th fight. And I know some of the Mexican fighters turned pro very, very young. I mean, Canelo turned pro when he was 15. 
Um, but a lot of these guys, they learn in the professional ranks. They don't have long amateur careers. And they pick up defeats. Sometimes they're stoppage defeats, but they kind of learn from them. And this is why you, sh you, you just can't overlook these Mexican guys. They're teak tough. They're battle hardened. What's the old line? Um, steel sharpened steel or something like that. These guys, they, they become, yeah, they, yeah they, they become battle hardened. And they pick up all the tricks of the trade and the experience is invaluable. And they fight in all the clubs and... You know, so, and by the way, this, I think I'm right in saying this was the first time Curiel had been out of Mexico. So clearly he, he was, I mean, he, he, you know, he blew the doors off the, off the, the uh, light flyweight division with this victory. And the question is, can he do it again? Now, I think this will depend largely on Nonchinga. Like I say, there was a slight question mark over his chin. And certainly when he got hit by that punch back in November, he was flattened. He was out. I think he stirred, but he didn't know where he was, and he was never going to beat the count. And again, Curiel statistically is a light puncher. There's a psychological damage that's going to be on Nonshinga. He was the guy expected to, you know, waltz into superstardom in the light, lighter weights. He was supposed to outbox Curiel, maybe beat him up a bit. He gets flattened. How is how is that going to affect him? Affect his psyche? Is he going to be carrying those ghosts into the rematch? Maybe, maybe so. Um, Curiel, in fact, for the four minutes that it lasted, um, not Shingo wasn't doing too bad at all. Curiel looked dangerous, like all these Mexican guys. Come forward, fighter throws big hooks. Um, very being very very small, these guys are very um, industrious. They'll, you know, they'll, their work rate is very, very high, um, quick with the feet. But it looked like Nonchinga, unless he did something silly, was going to, it was going to outbox him. Of course, it's twelve rounds. Thirty-six minutes is always a long time when you've got a lot of pressure being put on you. Um, and I just wonder whether, even if Curiel hadn't landed that big punch in the second round, whether Nonchinga could have held him off for twelve rounds. Maybe he could have done, but. I don't Shinga like a lot of South African fighters, even though even the ones that like to box on the back foot, they there is an element to them where, you know, if they tend to meet fire with fire. I mean, I'm generalizing here. I'm thinking about previous um, South African fighters. The only one who, who I always thought boxed a very, very disciplined fight, that is to say, never got out of his game plan. I'm going way back. It was Brian Mitchell. Um who was a very, very good um, super featherweight champion. I think he held, at different times, he held the IBF and the WBA title, I think. I'll have to check on that. But he, this was during the apartheid years, and he couldn't box in South Africa, so he'd, he'd go around the world. He fought in Britain at least once. I know he, he beat Jim McDonald on points. But he was always a very, very disciplined fighter, very, very disciplined. But a lot of these South African fighters... When they get pressure put on them, they, they respond in kind. So they like to box a lot, and there's, they have that sort of loose-limbed language style, a lot of them. Um, but when the heat gets put on them, they do like to exchange. Now, I think if Nonshinga does this again, he's going to get flattened again. And that's going to be my prediction for this fight. I think that Curiel, I don't think he'll get him, get him out of there early, but I think he'll grind down Nonshinga, um, get closer gradually, he might, there's a danger here that Curiel, having flattened on Shinga the first time with one punch, might go looking for another one-punch knockout and get out of box. Kind of like Maurizio Lara when he fought uh, Lee Wood the second time. I mean, I know he, he hadn't prepared properly for that fight and he was overweight. But he just seemed to be constantly looking for one punch and in the end got completely out of box. It's possible that non Shinga could do that to Curiel. But I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. I think Curiel will put a lot of pressure on Nonshinga. We'll probably have to come from behind after maybe five rounds, six rounds, he might be down on the scorecards. But I can see him catching up with Nonshinga. And there is a question mark over Nonshinga's punch resistance, definitely. Like I say, he was flawed earlier in his career and sort of squeaked by. One of his defences, he squeaked by on a close decision, like 114, 113 or something, on a couple of cards. That was his closest fight up to that point. And I, I just think that the Curiel will probably get close to him around about the seventh and eighth round, those, those middle rounds, start to land cleanly and 
I think he'll probably stop Nonchingo, either knock him out or force the referee's intervention. And I'm going to go for round eight. I will say that Curiel repeats his win over Nonchinga in a, with an eighth round stoppage. That's my prediction for this uh, particular fight. But like I say, it's on Friday, not Saturday. So if you want to watch it, I think it's on DAZN. It's a DAZN uh, show. Um, and this, this is actually in Mexico. So whereas before, um, Curiel was, it was, like I say, it was his first fight out of Mexico. He's now defending his title in Mexico. That's another factor. You're not just coming off being flattened in four minutes by a guy. You're fighting the same guy and you're doing it this time in his backyard. I think Nonshinga will show a lot of pluck and, and ability. But I think once the going gets tough, Curiel will grind him down. So that's my prediction. Adrian Curiel to stop or knock out uh, Sivanethi Nonshinga in eight rounds. What do you think? Are you looking forward to this fight? What do you think of both these guys? Do you think the first fight was an aberration and that normal service will be resumed on Shingo will outbox Curiel? Or do you think Curiel, with that very low KO percentage, will actually get another stoppage over on Shingo? I think so. But you know, leave your comments below and um, let me know what you think. Thank you for your time, as always. Please subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit that like button as well, that little thumbs up thing. And yeah, looking forward to reading your comments. Catch you later. Bye for now.